Good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Bruce Sinclair, and as one of the co-chairs of the event, I'd like to welcome you to uh, GoGoNet Live. Um, first, I'd like to thank our, uh, you know, our on-site attendees, uh, but a big part of this conference is, is also online, so I'd like to thank them for joining us as well. I'd like to thank our speakers. We have 30, uh, we have, we have 30 speakers and workshop instructors. Um, who are some of the best IPv6 minds in the, in the industry. I'd like to also thank our sponsors, Cisco, uh, A10 Networks, Juniper, Blue Cat, and F5, because without these sponsors, we wouldn't be able to produce the show. So GoGoNet Live is a mashup of a traditional conference and, a, and social media. And we, we use social media to improve the conference in a number of different ways. A traditional conference comes and goes after a couple of days. It's generally a broadcast model where you have a speaker like myself up on a podium communicating one way uh, to, you know, to, the, to the attendees. But what we try to do with social media is, is a few things. The first thing we try to do is make, is open up complete access to the speakers. And the way we do this is you can contact the speakers by going to the agenda, clicking on their, on their profile, making contact with them. You might want to talk to them about their presentation. You might have questions about their expertise. But in any case, every one of them are on, is on the GoGoNet social network. And that's the purpose of the social network, is to be able to communicate between, you know, between professionals learning IPv6. Also, between members that are between attendees that are here at the show. Um, just like you can, you can go to the agenda, see the speakers, you can also go to the GoGoNet live group on, on GoGoNet, and you can see everybody that, I think there's 60-odd there's, um, people, 70, 80 people that are, that are signed up there. You can make connections with them, and that's really good if you want to meet them before, um, during, or after the show. And again, this doesn't have to be just on site. There's a lot of people that are part of the, that are part of the, the group, the conference, that actually are signing in. They help they helped with defining the conference, but they're actually not physically here. Um, we also use a social network to amplify the audience. And generally, the amplification is around 100 to 1. So in the last couple years, we've had a total of around 200 you know, conference attendees, not including this year. And over using, our social, using social media, we've, we've increased that to around 22,000 what we're calling on-site attendees. Now what this means is, is effectively they are going through these presentations and watching them. If you look at statistically, again, it's around, this is from August of this year, so August of 2012, um, 22,000 unique online viewers watched around 27,000 uh, presentations, you know, pres uh, 27,000 uh, presentations, both on YouTube and on GoGoNet. So this is also a very useful resource Again, using, using social media to amplify what we're doing here, but mostly we're playing to the internet. Another thing that we use uh, social media for is to actually define the, the direction of the conference and the content. Um, we'll be talking, we'll be talking to our, I'll be introducing our keynote speaker in, in a few moments. Um, and actually, he defined, he actually made a suggestion in the GoGoNet live group of what the theme of the conference should be. This was after a few, this was after a bunch of discussion. After we came up with a theme online, we then defined what the presentation structure should be, what the content of, of the conference should be. So this is all happening in the, uh, in the GoGoNet live uh, working group. We put it up on June 13th and we had around 88 members that were contributing to both defining and, uh, the conference and the theme and the agenda of the conference. So the theme of the conference this year is enterprise-wide um, adoption, a holistic approach. Uh, because of that, I thought I'd give you a few statistics uh, from our, our uh, social network, uh, members from our social network that are involved in enterprise. So 17% of the registered members, and we have 80,000 registered members for, for GoGoNet, um, are, involved in, are involved in moving the network that they're moving to IPv6 is the enterprise network. Um, compared to, say, 34% for broadband, in the mobile space, it's 13%. You can see enterprise at 17%. Government, it's a little bit larger now because we only started breaking out government from enterprise 
um, a few months ago, but that's coming in at 1%, research and education. And then also companies that are moving their services or their websites to IPv6. And then finally, companies or, or individuals that are developing IPv6 products, that makes up almost 10% of the breakdown of, of the members. So everybody here is going to fall into one of these categories. And one thing that you can do in, in, in GoogleNet is actually search for others. Uh, you, can, you can zoom down pretty closely. So for example, if you're moving a product to IPv6 and you want to meet others that are in your city, you could do a search for products. You know, the specialty is, is we're moving an IPv6 product. And in, let's say, San Jose, California, and for sure you'll get, you'll get a number of people that will come up. And this is really the strength of using the social, of the social network. Now, if we look at what the jobs are, what the professions are for people that are moving enterprise, it's kind of a little bit all over the place. And it could be as much as uh, uh, an issue of what we're asking as, as what the real job descriptions are or job, or job titles are. But mostly it's, network, it's mostly network engineers, system administrators, software developers. And you can see um, around a 15 to 85 percent breakdown from students moving enterprise networks to IPv6 versus 85 for, profession, uh, for professionals. Geographically, this is a little bit interesting. If we look at where enterprise networks are being moved to IPv6, you can see by far RIPE, you know, this, uh, so in Europe. So I've broken down the, the membership by, by, the, by the different RIRs. And uh, by far, almost half of all the members that, are, that have stated they're moving their, their enterprise network to IPv6 are coming from Europe, followed by, um, by Asia, which is, again, a little bit more what I would expect, a little bit more uh, likely. And I would think it would be a little bit higher given the address depletion in Asia occurred earlier than just recently in Europe. And then followed by you know, the North America and the regions around that by 20%, and then finally, uh, both Latin America and Africa. More, I think, more interesting is where are where are people in the migration uh, to IPv6? So the way that we we break it up is that we we look at uh, five different categories: researching IPv6. So this is just the very beginning. This is doing the internet searches. This is maybe taking courses. This is the very early stages. Once you get a little bit of knowledge up, the next step is actually testing IPv6. So generally, what are people are doing are building a home network. Ironically, even though IPv6 is, is looming, most, most companies, and in this case, most enterprises, will not give their, their, uh, their IT or the networking professionals the time at work to move to IPv6. And these guys know that they're going to be the ones that are going to be responsible. So 75% of our members are actually starting by moving their home networks you know, to IPv6. So, so you might be doing the same thing as well. So building a test network after that, actually doing, um, doing a trial. And this can mean different things, especially, specifically in the enterprise uh, context, deploying it and then in production. As you can see by far, and this mimics actually each of the different, uh, each of the different network types that are moved to IPv6, but by far, people today anyway are in the testing phase. Which is good news because when we were doing this at the beginning two years ago, the very big part of the bulk was in the research phase. So you can see this, this uh, crest of the wave, theoretically anyway, will move over time um, from the research, researching stage uh, to the in production stage. So our agenda for the conference is the same at a high level as we normally do. So our first day, um, Many of you maybe were here, were, were here for the workshops. So we had four fantastic workshops, uh, ranging from absolute beginners to, to absolute experts. Um, I'd like to thank again our workshop instructors. And then today, the way we're going to start off is, is after my introduction, I'm going to introduce our keynote speaker. Um, we're going to then move through some case studies. So these are from folks that have actually been there, done that, you know, and specifically a case study starting in the government. Again, another form of enterprise. Um, then doing some, some organizational case studies, another panel um, of case studies for moving the enterprise to IPv6. And then this is the part that we define, uh, that we generally define on the, uh, on the social network is the functional presentation. So we define what are the steps are important to move to IPv6, and then we, we select and we find speakers that are experts in each of those steps. Um, those functional steps will occur today. 
um, we'll, they'll continue tomorrow. And then we also have from our sponsors uh, vendor presentations, which is also very important because it's one thing, obviously, to research how you're going to move to IPv6, but you need to, you need to um, often buy pur uh, purchase products that to allow you to transition to IPv6 as well.